Okay, before I get into the subject of today's video, I want to thank the patrons. Really appreciate all these guys. As I've said so many times before, the community is growing. It's hard to imagine that people would be willing to sign up to something like that. And so I'm grateful to all of you guys. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one video sessions with me, if you're interested in helping choose these video topics, if you're interested in the monthly Q and A's that we do over there, consider signing up to the Patreon group. I also want to thank all of you guys who've subscribed. We are over the 10,000 subscriber mark, which, you know, it gives me motivation to keep doing this. And I really appreciate all of you guys who watch. Consider going over to www.clubdist.com, picking up a deck, a hat, a shirt, a crew neck from my brand, Collage Skateboards. You can use the code NORMAN for 20% off of all collage gear at clubdist.com. Enough plugging, let's get into it. So today's rookie mistake is one that I see all the time. And I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent to help explain this first off. So I'm a big fan of combat sports. And when I say I'm a big fan, I mean I train when I have the time to. I watch pretty much every UFC event. I watch a lot of the fight pass stuff. I watch boxing. You know, uh, I watched the Canelo Charlo fight. Of course, I watched the last Terrence Crawford fight. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, of course. Got to support uh, but one thing that combat sports athletes always do that impresses me is when they're interviewed and when the media will ask them about an opponent other than the opponent that they're facing or if it's not a title bout and the media asks them about the title, you know, all of the best fighters will say the same thing. And it sounds like a rehearsed response because Partially, it may be. However, it just gives a good snapshot of their mindset. And what they say is, I'm not looking forward right now. I'm focused on the opponent that I have in front of me. And the reason this is relevant to skateboarding is that when I'm teaching, I teach about 20 people every week, right? And those are contracted clients that I am there specifically to teach. However, because of the growth of this channel, because of young people watching me skate, and because of my curiosity to see if I can help someone learn something quicker, I end up spending time helping a lot of young skaters out with tricks. And one thing that I see constantly, and I see it with my students, I see it with random skaters at the park, is that let's say a kid's trying to learn a kickflip, right? And I have several kids that are on the verge of landing their first kickflips, right? So they're finally able to flip the board and not push the board out in front of them because most beginners, they go through phases. First, they can't comprehend how you could flip the board over, right? This is why you learn a shove it first because learning how to make the board move and identify when it's in the right position for you to catch it or land on top of it, shove it is the best way to learn that. There's also the little half flip where you put your feet under the board and flip it over and land on it, right? We have to train our eyes uh, so that we can see when it's the appropriate time to land on the board. We also have to get used to moving the board in such a way that we can land on it, but starting the movement from on top of the board. All of these things are pretty difficult in the beginning and very difficult to understand when you don't have a, a track record that you can draw experience from to guide you through it. So... A lot of the kids that I'm teaching kickflips, like they've got to the point where they can stay on top of the board and flip it over and either land on it halfway or land on it with the back foot, but not the front or land on it with the front foot, but not the back. And usually what it comes down to is your hips aren't very strong in the beginning. So you're able to flip the board, but you're using everything you have to get it to flip over. And then you're not able to keep your knees up. That's why I always stress sucking your knees up toward your chest. It's so important that you learn to do this, that you strengthen your hip flexors. And also on another tangent, that you stretch your hip flexors because my hip flexors are so tight from basically a lifetime of 
popping, being explosive, and then sucking my knees up and using everything in my body to hold my knees there, right? That's made my hip flexors extremely tight. So I'm having to do all sorts of exercises to create space in the hip pocket, to loosen up my hip flexors. And you don't want to be in my position when you're 38 years old and still trying to skate and still trying to be mobile. So you want to get on top of that stretching now. But back to the rookie mistake. So a lot of the kids that I'm teaching kick flips, you know, the other day, one of my little guys, and this is a young guy, so it's no salt on him because for a kid, it's very difficult to understand steps and how you have to move from one plateau and climb up to the next plateau, right? Kids don't understand that. Why would they understand that? They don't have enough life experience to understand that. Uh, he's, you know, trying his kickflip. We got him a little closer to his kickflip, and then he stopped doing kickflips, and he said, I want to do a varial flip, you know? And it's funny when it's coming from a nine-year-old, right? Because a nine-year-old is a child, and you can't expect a child to know any more than what his experience has shown him. But I run into this with teenagers and young adults as well, and that's, that's where it gets a little different, because... By the time you're 16, 17 years old, there should have been things in your life that showed you to focus on the task at hand, right? So a lot of people have issues with school and me, I'm grateful for the education that I received because it taught me how to tackle tasks, right? And it, and it teaches you this method, right? Like a lot of people don't say they don't like math and I don't think that everybody who says this doesn't like math. I think that there's a problem with the way that math is taught. It's like chemistry. When I was in AP chemistry, I had one of the worst teachers known to man. And my entire AP chemistry class, we cheated. I went, I went to school with kids whose brothers and sisters had taken the same AP classes, had the same teachers, saved their work. We cheated from their work. Because when we asked my teacher, why she didn't teach us, she said it's because you're the AP class and I expect you to be able to get this stuff. And while we may have been more advanced students, we're still students, we're still kids, right? We still have to be taught a process. We still have to have things explained to us in a way that we can break it down and internalize that and use it in the rest of our lives. And mathematics is something that if you, if you struggle with it, I urge you to try and, and, and at least basic algebra, right? Like a quadratic equation is the perfect, the perfect example because it's like if you can learn the steps, right, to balance out each side of that equation and then end up with your answer, right, just the most basic algebraic equation, you can apply that to the rest of your life. And I apply that type of thinking to my skateboarding. And I wouldn't have got that if it wasn't for the education that I received. What I'm getting at is you can't apply this approach to one trick if you're skipping ahead and trying others at the same time. And a lot of times, you know, we see other people do things as skaters, as humans, and it looks attractive to us because it's novel, right? And so we let the novelty of something else take us away from what we've been trying already, even though we haven't gotten the valuable lesson from what we're trying. So if we're trying a kickflip and we're nearly getting it, and when we land on our kickflip with one foot, then we see our friend trying to varial flip and we start trying to varial flip. Well, we don't know how to kickflip. And what you learn from a kickflip is how to flip your board over, identify when it's time to catch, allow your feet to hit the board and then land. If you can't do this with a kickflip, then add a shove it to the kickflip. And logically, we can say it's going to be exponentially more difficult and you're nerfing yourself, right? You are, you are diminishing your ability to learn because you're, you're focused. It's not concentrated. And so this rookie mistake is very important for a lot of you guys because I see this all the time. And I can understand that not landing a trick gets frustrating. Like, fortunately for me, I'm an obsessive and relentless individual. So when I was learning how to kickflip, the only flip trick that I was trying was kickflips. And, you know, 
I was trying them for a month straight. Kickflip, 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 kickflip. Trying them until I was completely tired. And then maybe I'd go do some slappy nose slides or anything else. But if I was doing flip tricks, it was kickflips. And I whittled away at all the negative things that I was doing. I saw a skater who was closer to my level instead of the guys who I was skating with where I was 13 and just starting and they were 16, 17, had been skating for a few years. They were doing a a version of the kickflip that I wasn't able to do. So watching them kickflip didn't necessarily help me because my body wasn't capable of producing the same result on the skateboard because of the lack of experience, the lack of muscle memory, all of that stuff. So when I saw my buddy Sebastian, who was closer to my level, do the kickflip his way, I was able to see what he was doing, add that to what I was doing, and then it just worked. It worked, It worked. I believe, the same day that I saw him do kickflips and I fo- kind of followed him around. I was that pesky kid who if you could do something that I couldn't do and I wanted to figure it out, I'd follow you around, ask you questions. Just the way people do that to me, and that's why I don't get upset about it nowadays. But the thing that I did instinctively that I see a lot of people not do is I focused intensely on the task at hand. And I would go to sleep at night thinking about that kickflip, and then eventually thinking about that varial flip, and then eventually thinking about that backside flip, and then thinking about that tray flip, and then thinking about that backside heel flip. And those are the only tricks that I can remember that I learned in succession, and that's the order that I learned those tricks in. And and there's a reason I can remember that today. It's because I put so much time and so much focus into those individual tricks. I remember the first complete, that the only complete that I got as a present fully, uh, I learned back heels and I tried to backside heel flip down this three stair on the way from school. First semester of ninth grade, Artesia High School. Um, There was a three stair on the way back and I broke that zero deck um, on the way home and I was heartbroken. I had to put my old element, uh, element feather light deck on that I had gotten secondhand from a kid down the street in the cul-de-sac. I, my family had moved in with my aunt and my grandmother at this point, and uh, I met these kids down the road who skated, two Hawaiian kids, I wish I could remember their name. My board was all janky and jacked up, and they gave me an old element feather light. I had to put that feather light back on, and then I learned how to do the back heel down the three stair on that feather light. It never broke. Element boards were great back then. They're still great today, I believe. Uh, they were PS sticks back then. I'm not sure who mac- manufactured them now. But the point of all this ranting is that you have to focus on the trick that you're doing now. And in some of my other videos, I kind of went over like what you should be learning when as a beginner. And that's why it's important for you to learn on multiple obstacles. Because if you're skating for three hours and for three hours you're trying kickflips and you're not getting them, you're obviously going to burn out. That's why at the same time, you should be learning rock to fakies on a little quarter pipe. And if you have those, you should be learning to slash on a quarter pipe. And you should also be learning to roll up and nose stall on a curb. And then taking that and slowly changing your angle and learning how to slappy nose slide. So that you can, if you're you're skating for three hours, you can spend an hour on your kickflip. And then when that tires you out, you can stop, take a break, get some water, and then work on that slappy nose slide. And then when that gets frustrating or when you land it, you can move on to the rock to fakie, to the slash, to the axle stall, to the feeble stall. It's important to be doing multiple tricks, but it's important that when you are skating flat ground and you're on this flat ground trick, right? You might go do some ollies, do some 180s, do some shove But then when it's time to kickflip, you focus on that kickflip. Skill acquisition will allow you to express yourself, and in my opinion and in my experience, having learned how to skateboard well, having learned to play music, to write music well, I know that the better I get, the more I can express myself, the more fun I can have. If all you're gonna do is flail around and miss tricks, and you're not going to develop some type of heuristic that helps you have a better time, you're probably going to quit eventually. And I know tons of people who quit because it just got too difficult. And I can remember that some of those people, the way that they skated when they were learning, they just had no focus, right? And everybody that I know who is still skating till this day and who got to a certain level where they can just go and express themselves, they focused on one trick per obstacle that they were skating at a time. And that is just... Simply the best way to do it. Uh, and, I, you know, I have a lot of experience skating. 
I've accomplished a lot of things skating, thankfully. I've been able to travel and do a lot of things, and I owe it all to the approach that I took. And it, it's just a function of me being a weird, nerdy individual who obsesses over things. But that type, that type of personality lends itself to skateboarding, right? It lends itself to music making. It lends itself to filmmaking. Pretty much anything where there's a steep learning curve for you to be able to express yourself, you have to kind of develop this mindset where you're able to just focus on that one thing, right? Don't scale out and look at the trick you're gonna do next because you're going to be anticipating that and it's going to sap your focus from what's important, which is what you're learning right now at this point in time. Or you could just go out and cruise and you can still have fun. But my video is not aimed at people that are going out to cruise and have fun. If, if that's all you're going to do, you don't need to watch videos like mine, right? My videos are for a specific audience, people that are trying to get better, people who realize that their experience is going to be bolstered by the skill acquisition that's going to allow them to express themselves. So if that's not you, there's no problem with that. I'm not telling you that your way of skating is wrong, but you really have no reason to watch my videos. And so any critique that you would lobby is pointless. I just wanted to cover all the bases. That's what I have today. It doesn't require any specific tricks. I can't skate right now anyway. I've got a huge blister on the baby toe of my right foot, which I believe I got when I was filming a trick. So I'm off the board, but at least I get to teach. And uh, yeah, if you see the microphone here, I'm experimenting with a different setup. The microphone, this microphone just gives a little bit better of sound quality. And I'm also using my Tascam Model 12 as a mixer so I can, you know, bump up the low end, scoop the mids a little bit, add a little bit of top end and some compression just to give you guys better audio quality. So if you think that this sounds better than the shotgun mic that I've been using, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy skateboarding. Enjoy skateboarding for me because I don't know how long this blister is going to keep me out. Took my dog for like a mile and a half walk yesterday. And when I came back, uh, my sock was just drenched and it was a big mistake. So uh, it is what it is. I've done my share of skateboarding.